Here's another example not in your coding handbook. I wanted to give you some examples of cases that would use more of the guidelines. This particular exercise, the patient is a 46-year-old female admitted for treatment of right kidney cancer. The kidney was transplanted to this patient last year. What guideline comes to mind? If you've been listening over the last several lectures, you should read your guidelines first, then attempt to do your exercises, then read your guidelines again, always relating those guidelines back to what you've read in those exercises. And this is a guideline I did not see in the coding handbook that I think you should always be aware of. There's enough people getting transplants now that this could easily come up when you're in the field. A malignant neoplasm of a transplanted organ should be coded as a transplant complication. The guideline tells us we're going to use a code from category T86 which is complication of transplanted organs and tissues as our principal followed by C80.2, malignant neoplasm associated with a transplanted organ, and then an additional code assigned for the specific malignancy. So the, the guideline has already given us two codes that we know we have to use, the T86 category and the C80.2 code, and tells us we need to look up that whatever malignancy she has, she has kidney cancer, we look up under our table of neoplasms, malignant primary column. It's the kidney with a C64 dash, meaning we're going to have additional characters to identify her as having the right kidney. The right is character one in this code, so the final code is C64.1. So just a good example of knowing that it's not always about organs that you were born with. Sometimes it's about organs that you received. To show you the pathway, in the case of a transplant, you're going to start with complication as your main term, then transplant, then kidney, specified type NEC. That's a T86.19 code. And there are instructional notes that go along with this category. So the first thing I want to do is go into the alphabetical index and briefly look at this complication transplant to show you how we look at this. Okay, we're in complication. We're going to go down to transplant. There's transplant. We're looking for kidney. Here's kidney. T86.10, failure, infection, rejection, and specified type. I think because we're talking about the malignancy, we would use the specified type. It's not one of these things, but our documentation did address a specified type, so I think the correct code is T86.19. Let's look it up in our tabular. And here we are, T86.1, complications of kidney transplant, unspecified, rejection, failure, infection, other complication. I'm going to say it's this one, the cancer because it's not unspecified, we know it's a cancer. So we would use T86.19 as our code for the malignancy due to, no, malignancy of the transplanted kidney. Kid One point I wanted to make was to look at the instructional notes with this category. And this is why you often want to go not just straight to the code, but go back to the beginning of this section this is called a category code when you have three characters here. It's not complete. You've got this little fourth out here telling you you need at least a minimum of four characters for this to be a complete code. But in this category, you're going to use additional codes to identify other complications such as a graft versus host disease, a malignancy associated with the organ transplant, which is the case that we're working on, and use C80.2. So not only do our guidelines tell us to use C80.2, but this instructional note also tells us to use C80.2. So you're always going to be reading uh, above whatever code you're looking at, reading above to the category to see if there's any instructional notes that apply to your case, in addition to looking at your gu guidelines.
Here's another example that is not in the code book. And it's a pregnant patient. And I'm not going to get into this too deeply because to me, the OB, the coding of pregnancy and pregnancy related conditions, is one of the more difficult chapters in the ICD 10 CM code book. So we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on it, but I just wanted to make you aware that there is a very specific guideline that relates to a pregnant patient having the malignant neoplasm. You will learn when you get to this chapter, is chapter 15 in the code book that the week of gestation is always reported for any patient in the hospital who is pregnant. At the very beginning of the chapter 15 codes, there is a little table that tells you how the weeks correspond to the trimester. And week 29 is the third trimester. So that Z3A.29 is her weeks of gestation. I know I'm jumping ahead, but that just explains to you where that comes from. There's no guideline about that in that I'm aware of is in the code book actually that gives you that direction. There is a guideline for malignant neoplasm in a pregnant patient and this tells us to use the O, that's not a zero, the O9A.113 code. The O9A category is at the very end of chapter 15 in the code book. I'll show you that in a moment. So we're going to use that code as our principle because chapter 15 codes, the pregnancy or, or OB codes, always are principal. They are always the, I shouldn't say always, they are most often your principal. There's a very few instances where they're not. And then we're going to identify the cancer. That's our, Z, our C50.912. And then, of course, our Z code indicating our weeks of gestation. The table of neoplasm, if you look up breast, you get the C50.9 dash, meaning additional characters are needed. We're going to assign that character with her left breast being those extra characters. And let's see. Nope, that's a different one. So let's go to I'm not going to spend much time looking up this pregnancy code because I, that will come later. I just want you to just primarily be aware of the fact that there is a guideline specific to a malig malignant neoplasm in a pregnant patient. Here's another exercise not in your coding handbook patient is admitted for a pathological fracture of L4-5 initial encounter due to bone cancer. Treatment during this stay will focus on the treatment of the pathological fracture. That documentation is important because our coding guidelines tell us that the sequencing is dependent on the focus of treatment when you have a pathological fracture due to a neoplasm. Your pathway is here on the slide. Fracture, pathological is your main term with subterms due to neoplastic disease, vertebrae. Takes you to M84.58. When you go to the tabular, you see that there is a seventh character needed. We know the initial encounter is our seventh character. So we need a placeholder X in the sixth character position. And that indicates that pathological fracture. It's the principle because our focus of treatment during this encounter is the treatment of that pathological fracture. And the cancer is there because that's the reason why he has this pathological fracture. Here's another example, the same example. However, this time the focus is on the bone cancer, not the fracture. So all we do is inverted our codes so now our cancer diagnosis is our primary code and the vertebrae fracture, the th th um, T5-6 fractures are the secondary code in this case. And here's another exercise not in the coding handbook that's very common in the hospitals and that is when you have an anemia associated with the malignancy. If the patient is admitted for treatment of the anemia associated with acute monocytic leukemia, you're going to 
sequence the malignancy as the principal, followed by the code for the anemia as your secondary code. And here I have the pathway is prim primary term is anemia, or main term is anemia, in, which can also mean due to or with, neoplastic disease. Remember that terms in parentheses are non-essential modifiers. It wouldn't have to say that, but it might say that. Then your acute monocytic leukemia. In the alphabetical index, leukemia is your main term with subterm acute monocytic, and that takes you to C93.0. Additional characters are needed. You look up the C93.0 in your tabular, and that gives you your fifth character zero. I'm not going to spend as much time going back and forth between the alphabetical index and the tabular unless I get more questions because these podcasts just get so long. I'm trying to be um, a little more efficient with that. Another exercise not in the coding handbook is a patient admitted for treatment. The next exercise not in the coding handbook is the patient is admitted for treatment of anemia caused by chemotherapy for the treatment of bladder cancer. We have a guideline that directly addresses anemia associated with chemo. And here we go, it's coding guideline 1C2, C2. When the admission is for management of anemia associated with an adverse effect of the administration of chemo or immunotherapy and the only treatment is for the anemia, the anemia code is sequenced first, followed by the malignancy codes and the adverse effect code. So we see the T45.1X5 is already given to us as one of the codes that we're going to use. We also have the anemia code here, and here's your cancer code for bladder cancer. So here's your anemia code. The pathway is anemia due to antineoplastic chemo, D64.81. And note that there is an excludes one note that if a patient were getting um, neoplastic note that there Note the excludes one note. Anemia in neoplastic disease and anemia due to antineoplastic chemo are two different things, two different codes. Excludes one, as a reminder, means you cannot code those two things. Note the excludes one note that anemia in neoplastic disease and anemia due to antineoplastic chemo are two different things, two different codes. Table of neoplasms, using that for our bladder cancer, we see in the malignant primary column C67.9 is the code for the bladder cancer. And if we were looking up, we have been given in our guideline the T45 code, but I also wanted to show you it is in the table of drugs and chemicals. If you look up antineoplastic, under the substance column, and then your adverse column, you find this. I think we're gonna we'll go to the code book and look at that one. And I have it highlighted in my book because I look at it quite often. Go back up here. Here's your substance, and then all the way over here is your adverse effect column. It's the next to last column. So we're going to go back down to antineoplastic. Antineoplastic. Um, we aren't given the specific chemo this person is using. So we're going to go across here to your adverse effects column. And this is where our guideline gets that T45.1X5 as the adverse effect, adverse effect code. Here we are, the T45. Here we go. T45.1X, adverse effect 
of antineoplastic and immunosuppressive drugs. Seven characters are needed. One, two, three, four, five, six, and our seventh character would be our encounter, which in this case is initial. Just as a reminder of this, if we go to the front of this chapter, this is chapter 19, and if we go to the very beginning of our T45 category, we see instructional notes here that the appropriate seventh character has to be added to each code from category T45, with A being our initial encounter, D subsequent, and S sequela. Our medical do record documentation told us it is initial encounter, so our seventh character is A for this T45 code. One last thing I want you to be mindful that the exercises in the PowerPoints don't address all of the guidelines. However, our exams can address all those guidelines. So please don't just study what we're doing in our exercises, but study all of the guidelines, knowing when you might apply them. Follow your assignment schedule with regard to the specific chapter assignments through the semester. That way you can stay on top of it. If you have any questions, please post your question in the discussion board, and I will attempt to answer it for everyone. And I hope you have a good day. Take care.